This is my best impersonation of my children. That's right. If I tell them, don't walk in the street, what do you think they like to do? They go right to the curb. They get as close as they possibly can to going in the street without actually going in the street. If we let them go out in the street and we tell them, don't go past this house, what do you think they do? They go right up to the edge of the property, maybe even tiptoe just a little bit over it and then come right back. What's interesting is there's a whole other property here over my shoulder that's actually fenced in. Parts of it are fenced in, right? My kids don't always like to be in the backyard because there's a fence. So on this property over my shoulder, I'll say, don't go inside of that fence. It's fenced off for a reason. What do you think they want to do? Now they want to go inside a fence. Why? Because I told them not to go inside the fence. You see, the thing is, we like to do the things that we're told not to do. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 7. He says, I do the things that I do not want to do. He refers to himself and his body as this body of death. And his point is, God's law, God's will, heart, and design for all of us is a good thing. It's God's perfect will and intent to get the most out of this life, for it to be fulfilling, for it to be healthy, for it to be loving and compassionate and kind and filled with peace between one another and between us and God. But Paul's point is, this body of death betrays us over and over and over again. Because God's law, God's heart, His will and His design says, don't do X, Y, and Z. Paul's point is, I now want to do those things. Why? Because someone told me not to. In fact, the fact that they told me not to do it entered the thought into my mind that maybe I want to go do something I never thought of doing before. This is the human condition. The human condition is to want to go right to the edge, if not even step over the edge. Some of us have so seared our conscience, and maybe you know folks like that, maybe that was in your past, that there's no longer this tension. Paul would talk about how we just hand ourselves over to all of our lusts and our passions and our godless rebellion and all of that potential within each of us. And maybe that was a season of your life and now you're trying to figure out how do I get back in God's will, heart, and design. And that's the beauty of Jesus. You see, Jesus never crossed over God's barriers, boundaries, His heart, His will, and His design. God did it perfectly in the person of Jesus. Did what we could never do. And in Jesus, there's actually freedom to move away from the curb and to step into true relationship, and to step into the comfort, recognizing that what's best for us is well, well, well within and far away from the curb and the dangers of what's beyond that. That what's here is what's meant to be, what's good for us. And because of Jesus, we can move from maybe being outside of the will of God right into this beautiful place because of what He did first for all of us. See, it's in Romans chapter 8 that Paul would talk about that nothing can separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus. No matter how far we've strayed, no matter if we've stepped over the line, no matter if we willfully at different phases of our lives just blew all of this off and did our own thing, maybe we even tasted the destruction and the hurt and the pain of not trusting in God's heart and His will and His design. Because of Jesus, we get to come back, come back into the fold, be in a right relationship, and live in the peace, the harmony, the love, and the unsurpassing joy that's in Jesus and Jesus alone.